pastors, seminarians, and saints who have come to the Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and Their True Meanings. Nice to meet you. I am the moderator, Pyeon Youngun. Since the creation of the world until now, God has hidden the secrets of the kingdom of heaven in parables, and the time has come, so today, the word of testimony is being spread around the world through YouTube. Believers from all over the world are sending us a message of gratitude, saying that the more lessons they hear, the more clearly they can understand the words of the Bible, which seemed like a mystery. Let us give applause and thanks to our God, who has given us all this understanding and grace. I hope that once again today, you will have a precious time to come to a full understanding of their true meanings when the secrets of heaven are revealed one by one. Then, first, we will pray with the same heart. Holy Father God, who is the source of life and blessings, we give gratitude and glory to you for allowing us to have the online seminar with the title of Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and Their True Meanings today. Please abundantly fill all of the children of faith who attended the Shincheonji online seminar this time with God's grace and love. Now is the time of fulfillment of the book of Revelation, where the promised new covenant is fulfilled by testifying to the churches what has been seen and heard through the messenger of Jesus. The promised pastor, who has seen and heard the events of the entire chapters of Revelation and mastered the words of Revelation, which is the comprehensive content of the New Covenant, is opening up all of the secrets of the Kingdom of Heaven, so please provide understanding and faith to each person who hears the secrets of Heaven at this time. Please be with us so that the words of life, the word of truth, overflow on the lips of the instructor who testifies to the word, and also that all the families of faith who listen to the word have a time filled with grace and hope. Through all these things we give you glory, and we pray all of this in the holy name of Jesus, who atoned for our sins. Amen. Today, you will receive the word of testimony on the topic of Lesson 13, the figurative blood and flesh of the Lamb. In John chapter 6, Jesus says, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Then, what is Jesus' blood and flesh that we must drink and eat at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, when the eternal life is promised? Let us find out through the Word. I hope you will have a precious time of gaining great enlightenment. And we will have the instructor, Lee Joseph, from the John tribe, who will deliver the Word. Hello to all pastors, seminarians, and saints around the world who live the life of faith with a hope in heaven and eternal life. I am Lee Joseph, a center instructor who is taught by the leader of the John tribe amongst the 12 tribes of Shincheonji. Our tribe leader was taught by the chairman of Shincheonji, Lee Man Hee. I give you sincere gratitude for attending the Shincheonji online seminar, the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. The flesh and blood of the Lamb, which we will examine together today, has been hidden in the parables of the kingdom of heaven and it was told that these secrets would be made known plainly when the appointed time comes. If one does not understand the true meanings of the parables, they would not be able to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven nor the prophecies that were spoken in parables. In that case, even if the actual entity of the kingdom of heaven and the prophecy appears, they will, of course, not be able to recognize it, thus will not be able to participate in God's work of salvation. 
I sincerely hope that you will become the children of God who perceive the hidden secrets of God that have now been opened through the testimony on the secrets of the kingdom of heaven and their true meanings given through the promised pastor of the New Testament and receive the kingdom of heaven and the blessings of heaven. In particular, there are many pastors and seminarians around the world who are listening to this lecture at this time. Some of the pastors listening to today's lecture may already know of this content and some need to know this. But I would truly appreciate it if you open your hearts and listen to the words I am testifying during this time. Once again, I will tell you today's title. Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and Their True Meanings, Lesson 13, The Figurative Flesh and Blood of the Lamb. This word today is very important to those who believe in Jesus. The flesh and blood of the Lamb are directly related to salvation. Therefore, I hope that you will listen carefully and through this content that you will have a time to hear the words of life through which you can clearly understand how you can have salvation by eating the flesh and blood of the Lamb today. First, Let's read John chapter 6, verses 48 to 58 together. I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which a man may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply amongst themselves, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. In John chapter 6, verses 48 to 58, it is said that those who eat the flesh and drink the blood of Jesus have eternal life. Jesus is a man, and so how can we eat his flesh and drink his blood? These are the words that Jesus had spoken in parables. So in order to understand the meaning of the words of John chapter 6, let's take a look at the answer to the parables, the meaning of the figurative lamb and the flesh and blood of the lamb. As for the flesh and blood of the lamb, as many pastors already know, the lamb is Jesus. And the flesh and blood of the Lamb refers to Jesus' words of life. Let's verify through the Bible why these are the answers to the parables one by one beginning from now. Among the Old Testament prophecies in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 7, there was someone prophesied as a lamb that is led to the slaughter and the actual entity of this lamb was Jesus at the first coming. 
Thus, when it comes to lambs, there are physical lambs, and there is a figurative lamb under the guise of a physical lamb. And also, when it comes to the flesh and blood of a lamb, there are those that are physical, and those that are said figuratively under the guise of the physical ones. In John chapter 1, verse 29, Jesus is described as a lamb, saying, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Therefore, the figurative lamb is Jesus. Also, in Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, in which it is said that the life of a creature is in the blood, the blood represents life. In John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, it is written that the Word in the beginning is God, and also that there is life within God. Just as God is the word of life in the beginning, it is written in 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 to 2, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen, which we have looked at, and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. And also it is clearly testified that He is the one who was with the Father and sent to us, who was Jesus. However, in John chapter 1, verse 14, it is written that Jesus has appeared as the Word that has become flesh. Therefore, since Jesus, who was the Word of life in the beginning, became flesh and came to us, Eating the word of life that Jesus testifies is like eating the flesh and blood of Jesus. Therefore, the flesh and blood of Jesus are Jesus' words of life. In the words of John chapter 6, Jesus said that we must eat His flesh and blood in order to have eternal life. Then, in order to understand why Jesus said that we must eat His flesh and drink His blood to gain eternal life, let's take a look at the Passover at the time of Moses, a similar event in the Old Testament where the flesh and blood of the Lamb had appeared. God promised Abraham in Genesis chapter 15, verses 13 and 14, that your descendants will become strangers in a country not their own, and they will be enslaved for 400 years, and after the 400 years have passed, they will come out with great possessions and be led to the promised land of Canaan by God. And God chose Moses, who was the sixth generation of Abraham in Exodus chapter 3, and sent him to the Israelites who were enslaved in Egypt, and he was a savior to lead them to the land of Canaan. The problem, however, was that Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had captured the Israelites and did not release them. So God judged the land of Egypt through the first to the ninth plagues. However, when Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, whose heart became hardened, did not release God's people, God sent the tenth and last plague all over Egypt. The problem was that not only the Egyptians were in the land of Egypt, but the Israelites, who God had to save, were also there with them. So, God showed them how to pass over the tenth plague. 
If you look at the words of Exodus chapter 12, God showed the Israelites how to pass over the tenth plague. That is, if they slaughter a lamb without defect, put its blood on the sides and tops of the door frames, and eat the meat or the flesh of the lamb, then the spirit of the plague will pass over them. The people of Israel who slaughtered lambs smeared the blood on the door and ate the meat in obedience to God's word, and they passed over the plague on that night and came out of Egypt. This historic event was called as a Passover. Therefore, the blood of the Passover lamb was the blood of salvation. However, in Hebrews chapter 3 verse 5, it is written that Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house to testify to what would be said in the future. And in Colossians chapter 2, verses 16 to 17, the Apostle Paul said, Do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink, or with regard to a religious festival or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. However, the reality is found in Christ. Just as we can see that there was a salvation through the blood of the Lamb, through the history of the Passover in the time of Moses, this was to inform that there is a salvation through the blood of the Lamb, that is, Jesus. Therefore, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, Jesus is said to be our Passover Lamb. Now, going back to the reference passage then, when and where will the flesh and blood in John chapter 6 be eaten? And who will be able to eat it? The answer to this is found in Luke chapter 22. Let's read Luke chapter 22, verses 14 to 20 together. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. As you can see from Luke chapter 22, verses 14 to 20, Jesus made a new covenant with his disciples on the night of the Passover. Looking at the contents of the new covenant that Jesus had spoken of, he said that he would not eat it again until this Passover was fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He also said that he would not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then, if we think of this verse in another way, isn't it saying that there would be another time to keep the Passover when the kingdom of God is fulfilled? To eat this Passover again means to eat the flesh and to drink the blood of the Lamb, which is the food of the Passover and telling us that we will eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Lamb again is a promise that we will be saved through the event of the Passover once again.
And since Jesus, who is the reality of the Lamb, was going to depart soon because He would bear the cross, neither the Lamb nor the flesh and blood of the Lamb would be on this earth. That is why Jesus said to commemorate this with the bread instead of Jesus' flesh and the wine instead of Jesus' blood. In conclusion, He promised if we eat the blood and the flesh of the Lamb when the kingdom of God comes to this earth and is fulfilled, then we will have eternal life. And He said that when this gospel of the kingdom is preached to all nations, then the end will come. Then, as Jesus established a new covenant, that when the kingdom of God is fulfilled, the Passover meal would be eaten again. Let's find out when, where, and who will eat the Passover meal at the second coming of the Lord, that is, the flesh and the blood of the Lamb, and let us find out about this one by one. First, the time to eat the Passover meal, which is the flesh and the blood of the Lamb. This is a time of the fulfillment of the New Covenant, the Book of Revelation. Jesus the Lamb who had left will come back to this earth, so it will be eaten at that time. Second, it is said that this Passover will be eaten in the kingdom of God. So we need to know where the kingdom of God is. If we go to Revelation chapter 7, we can see that the 144,000 who were sealed are made up of 12 tribes. These are the kingdom and priests who are purchased by the blood of Jesus. Also, in Revelation chapter 14, it is said that Jesus the Lamb was on Mount Zion, and there with Him were the 144,000. Here, since it is said that the 144,000 learned the new song before the throne of God and before the four living creatures and the elders, we can see that both God and Jesus have come to Mount Zion. Therefore, Mount Zion refers to the new heaven and new earth, where the holy city, New Jerusalem of the spiritual realm, has come down to. In other words, the new heaven and new earth on this earth, where the kingdom of heaven of the spiritual realm has come down to, this becomes the kingdom of God, and this new heaven and new earth is called in short, Shincheonji. Therefore, Shincheonji becomes the kingdom of God on this earth. Combining this with the prior contents, we can see that the heaven of the spiritual realm, which is the holy city New Jerusalem, comes to the twelve tribes of Shincheonji on this earth. And since God and Jesus are in this place, it is possible to eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Lamb, which is the food of the Passover. Then let's read Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 to 10 together to see who will eat the flesh and blood of the Lamb, the Passover meal in the last days. And they sang a new song, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. In Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 to 10, it is said that Jesus will purchase people with His blood to make them into God's kingdom and priests. So the blood of Jesus, through which Jesus had made the new covenant, 
as the blood of the Passover about 2,000 years ago was shed for the kingdom and priests in Revelation chapter 5. And these people are those who are freed from sins by the blood of Jesus. In Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 to 6, it mentions this. Therefore, this kingdom and priests are those who have taken in the blood of Jesus. Also, in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9, and also verse 14, it is said that after the 144,000 are sealed, a great multitude dressed in white robes that no one can count will gather. And these are those who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So the great multitude in white robes who gather later also can be considered as those who have taken in the blood of Jesus. Therefore, we can know that those who take in the blood of Jesus at the second coming are the kingdom and priests purchased by Jesus' blood, and the great multitude who are wearing white robes washed with the blood of the Lamb, that no one can count. Next, we will look at through whom we can eat the flesh and drink the blood of Jesus, that is the word of life, at the time of the fulfillment of Revelation. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 1, we can see the conveyance of the word of Revelation in the last days. It is conveyed from God to Jesus, from Jesus to the angel, from the angel to John, and from John to the servants. Therefore, in the last days, if you want to eat the words of Jesus, the flesh and blood of the Lamb, you must find and meet this one person, John, who receives the revelation of Jesus on this earth. However, the John whom we must meet is not referring to the disciple of Jesus who was martyred on the island of Patmos approximately 2,000 years ago. Today, Jesus chooses a new person like John on this earth, and we can call this person as the new John. This person becomes a promised pastor promised by Jesus. The new John is the one who has seen and heard the reality of the events of all the chapters of Revelation, just as it says in Revelation chapter 22 verse 8, when Jesus fulfills the words of Revelation, and so he is the witness of Jesus. Also, he is the angel or the messenger whom Jesus has sent for the churches, as in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, and is a promised pastor who testifies to the events of all the chapters of Revelation. He was given the word of Revelation to eat, as it states in Revelation chapter 1, verse 1, and Revelation chapter 10. Therefore, believers living in the last days must meet the promised pastor, the new John, who receives and eats the words of revelation of Jesus so that all people can receive the testimony of the flesh and blood of Jesus. Then, what is the difference between those who eat the flesh and blood of Jesus, that is the word of life, and those who do not eat them? Let's read Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 to 6 together. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, and has made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Looking at the words of Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 to 6, it is said that those who take in the blood of Jesus, which is the word of life, are set free from their sins. Therefore, we can see that those who eat of this receive salvation, but those who do not eat of it do not receive salvation. 
Just like the Passover that was commemorated in the days of Moses when the passing of the plague of the death of the firstborn was done through the blood of the Lamb, even today there is a Passover when the kingdom of God is established according to the words of Jesus. Today, God's plague will pass over and one will receive salvation not through an actual blood of the Lamb, but through listening to the words of Jesus, who is life. That is why, in Revelation chapter 18, verse 4, it says, Come out of Babylon, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. Also, in Revelation chapter 17, verse 14, it is said that those who are with the Lamb, who is Jesus, are the chosen and faithful followers. This Passover event is similar to the harvest in Matthew chapter 13, verse 43, when those born of God's seed are harvested into the barn and saved. If we put these verses together, those who come to the 12 tribes of Shincheonji, where God and Jesus are in, in the last days, and hear the word of life that is like the blood of Jesus, will be harvested and passed over to be saved. On the other hand, those who are not passed over are like those who are not harvested at the time of the harvest, and their sins are not forgiven by the blood of Jesus, and we can see that they cannot be saved. Therefore, I hope that all pastors and believers who hear these words and use the Bible as a path to come to Shincheonji where God and Jesus are, and receive the testimony of the flesh and blood of Jesus, so that all can receive salvation. Lastly, the blood of Jesus is the spiritual weapon that is used to fight and overcome the devil. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, it is said that the blood of Jesus and the word of testimony are used to fight and overcome the group of the dragon. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 10, it is said that God's salvation, power, and the kingdom, and the power of Christ will be fulfilled by fighting and overcoming the dragon. Then without the blood of the Lamb, the group of Satan, the devil, cannot be fought against nor overcome, and God's kingdom will not exist on this earth. Therefore, you can see how precious the blood of the Lamb is at the end of times. Let's draw the conclusion for today. In John chapter 6, Jesus made it known that we must eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Lamb to receive eternal life in the last days. At that time, Jesus took up the cross and shed His blood. But as for that flesh and blood, as we see in Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 to 10, the blood was shed for those who are purchased with Jesus' blood and freed from sin to become the kingdom and the priests of God. And the blood was shed for the multitude in white robes in Revelation chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore, the effect of the blood of Jesus appears within the kingdom and priests and the great multitude in white robes. What is fulfilled in the Father's kingdom are the events of the book of Revelation and the twelve tribes. The blood was shed at that time, 
But eventually, it is the blood of salvation and the blood of promise through which the twelve tribes will eat and have eternal life at the time of the fulfillment of revelation. Pastors, seminarians, and all the saints who hope for heaven. If you truly understood today's message, then I sincerely ask you to listen to all the remaining testimonies on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings in order to become the 12 tribes of God's family purchased with the blood of Jesus. The next lecture will be given by a lecturer who will deliver the message much better than I did today. We look forward to seeing you again next time. We are one in God, transcending race, nationality, and religions. We are one. Let's pray together. Most Holy Father God, who is a source of life and blessings, I sincerely thank you for giving us the light and the rain and the air and also life to live each day once again. Father God, through the promised pastor, whom you have promised, the words of the parables of the secrets of heaven that have been hidden until now are opened and are being delivered to believers all over the world. So please allow the believers all around the world who are listening to this word to clearly understand the words so that they can come before you, Father. Today, through the flesh and the blood of the Lamb, we had a time to understand your kingdom, which is fulfilled at the second coming, and those who are able to receive salvation through the blood of Jesus. Father, help all the saints who hear these words to fully understand your word so that they can receive salvation to the twelve tribes of Shincheonji, your kingdom, at the second coming today. Please guide us so that not even one person gives up in the middle but listens until the end for all the remaining sessions. Until next time, I ask you to keep all of our saints healthy both physically and spiritually. We pray in the name of Jesus, whom we are thankful to. Amen. Thank you for listening to the very end. It is said that no one pours new wine into old wineskins. If that happens, it is said that the new wine will make the wineskin burst, and the wine will run out as well. Did Jesus say this because he was worried about wine and wineskin? Foolish virgins had the lamps but did not prepare enough oil. Therefore, the oil ran out as time passed. Everyone, did you prepare enough oil? What is this oil? I hope that we can all understand together and become the people of heaven. Yes, as you saw in the video, next Monday's seminar will be about the figurative new wine, new wineskin, and olive oil. The time is the same as today, at 10 a.m., so I hope everyone attends and you and I will all be able to enter heaven that we hope for. Testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings Shincheonji Online Seminar is being broadcasted simultaneously in 24 languages all around the world through the official YouTube channel of the Shincheonji Church of Jesus. In addition to what you have heard today, if you have more questions or inquiries about the doctrine of Shincheonji Church of Jesus, please contact the representative number of each tribe shown on the screen. We will kindly guide you in detail.
Now, we will conclude all of the programs of the Shincheonji Online Seminar by giving the prayer the Lord has taught us. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us of our sins, as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining us.